missile allocation system. I need to get that to Mark 2, I believe. Either Mark 2 or Mark 3. In order to... As well as a little bit more research into Plascrete, but I think... Yeah, it's after Plascrete Mark 3, I will get Plasteel. I'm fairly certain. And that will be the final piece of the puzzle for the Missile Fortress. And the reason I want the Missile Fortress is because it is the most overpowered, second most overpowered weapon in the game. It is the same size as a cannon fortress, but it is capable of hitting ground and air targets, and it's effectively a one-shot kill for almost any type of unit and it fires about six shots every time it has in between reloads so it is extremely deadly now while I instead of just wasting time talking here I should probably make up a new design python tracks and let's go with Scourge Missile. It won't have much health, but it'll pack a punch. It's good anti-tank uh, units right there. It would effectively be like a tank destroyer in Battlefield 3. Uh, the Armored Kill up the Armored Kill update that happened fairly recently. One of the DLCs. And just some news that you might want to know. Uh, Grant and I, we have gone and bought a recorder that will allow us to record games that we play on the Xbox 360, which is damn good. So that means we can get some, you'll be seeing some footage of Battlefield 3 from him, because that's, that's one of his, that's his uh, console game of choice. And I... And I might do a series of. Yep, there's Plasteel. A series that would be a playthrough of Fallout 3, going trying to run a perfect character. So level 100 in every in every skill, and level 10 in every special. I've done it before but there are things I could improve on and I don't entirely remember how I did it which is a damn shame because it would really help out a lot if I knew exactly what I was doing beforehand but you can't win them all so that's that um, other than that uh, not really too many exciting stories uh, that's, hap that's happened to me in the pa past little while. Uh, because my job gets pretty boring. Uh, because it's extremely repetitive and there's really nothing to distract you from your job. Just uh, if, if you aren't already aware. If you weren't already aware, uh, I am a lifeguard. So the only like real distraction that we get is sometimes we get uh, VATS, visual awareness test. So they'll throw in like either what they call the silhouette, which is supposed to just look, it sort of looks like just the outline of a fetus. And it's just a piece of cloth and it's weighted down and they toss that in. So it looks like there's something laying laying on the bottom of the pool and you would have to uh, hop in and rescue it or they throw in uh, a fake toddler which is named Timmy and the other option is they will live at you so they'll actually have someone Another one of the guards or one of the water park attendants actually go into 
go into the water that you're meant to be guarding and they'll fake having some sort of injury, usually a spinal injury. So really serious stuff. And then you have to perform the full rescue. You have to get them on the spinal board and get them out quick. And in the past two days, I've actually had to respond to... I, I wasn't the, like, I guess you could say targeted guard for the vats, but I have had to respond to three live vats in the past two days. So I was at, I was at a spot on rotation where when the long whistle's uh, blown, which means that there's a rescue happening, you have to run over to where it is and you have to assist in it. So I've had to do that three times in the past two days. Um, which it, it's a nice distraction, but just staying where you are and watching your water would be a lot easier and a lot less stressful. But it's all the things that they do to keep you on your toes, make sure that you're actually doing your job and that you can do your job in the event that something bad actually does happen, which uh, can happen. Obviously. So, their VTOLs are really, really pissing me off. So, you three, I'm gonna move you out there. Four, rather. Move you out there. And. That's still gonna take a while to research. That will be done fairly quickly. But I should research that. Increase the effectively armor of my units, which apparently is next to nothing because I'm getting my units are getting shredded right now. So let's back up. Let the cannon fortress do its job, and because of that U-turn, you died. Good job. You're wasting my resources, guys. By being complete fail boats. Production completed. Construction completed. that give me what I need? Structure under attack. It's not a peer to, so just keep researching Plasteel because it does increase the overall health of my hard points and fortresses, which is a good thing. Um, let's see here. I should also research the advanced missile warhead because that might be considered part of the tech tree for the missile fortress. I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember exactly. Because my memory is weird. Uh, I'll just randomly remember things and then I'll completely forget others. It's, it's a mess. Just a complete mess. Alrighty. I could do if I had room. Which I can make room. I'm gonna demo that. Demo that one too. You three move over there to clear the area. Because we need that research center. Not sure why I was letting myself run at like minimal capacity, or not minimal. One zero would be minimal, really. Okay. You assholes. Okay. So while they repair that after that swoop of douchebags. Uh, 
Um, hmm. It seems to be quiet out front, so let's move you up. Construction completed. Yeah, you guys have dense composite alloys. So, all right, super dense. How about that? Will that help you out a bit more? Better. Alright, so now these four are slightly stronger than the last four. And now they're not getting completely shredded, even though it's just a mortar. Or a pepper pot, rather. Because, yep, pepper pot. 